Pepper Shell can be especially useful for automating tasks. For example, you can configure a PowerShell script to run automatically in response to a system event. So let's take a look at how this works. As you can see, I've got the Windows Event Viewer on screen, and right now I've got the application log selected. And if I just right click on an event at random, you'll notice that there's an option to attach a task to the event. I'll go ahead and click on that menu option. And when I do, you can see that there's a wizard that pops up that allows us to associate a task with a particular system event. So let's take a look at how we might put PowerShell to work with regard to responding to an event. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. And I'm going to open up PowerShell. And as you can see, I'm working in an elevated PowerShell window, hence the administrator prompt. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a custom event log source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type new dash event log. And then space dash log name application space dash source and then in quotation marks demo and I'll press enter and so what this is going to do is it's going to create a new event log source for the application log called demo so what I want to do now is write a test event to the application log. And the way that I'm going to do that is by typing write event log. Space dash log name. Application. Dash source. Demo dash event ID and we'll just give this an event ID of 100 and then dash message and I'll just say this is a test event and I'll press enter and we get no visible response but let's check out our event log so here we are in the event log, and right now I don't see anything, but let's click refresh. And right here you can see our demo event. So you can see that the source is set to demo, and if you look at the event details, you can see this is a test event. Now, just to be perfectly clear, what we just did with regard to defining an event source and generating a test event, you don't have to do that in order to get PowerShell to respond to an event. You can run a PowerShell script in response to any Windows event. The reason why I did what I did was because I needed a predictable way of being able to generate events in a way that wouldn't be disruptive to the system. So by generating demo events, I'm able to test PowerShell's ability to respond. So now that I've done that, let's go ahead and take a look at the PowerShell script that I've created. So here's the script that's going to get run in response to any events that occur. So as you can see, this is a really simple script. It only has two lines of code. The first line is write output. The PowerShell script is executed. So there's a message that's going to be displayed within the console saying that the script has been executed. Now, in the real world, the console isn't always displayed. And even if the console is displayed, there might not be anybody around to see it. So we also want to write an event to the event logs. So here we have a write event log command. And once again, we're using the application log and we're setting the source to demo. I'm using a different event ID this time. The event ID I'm using is 200. And the message this time is going to be the PowerShell script has executed. So in other words, event ID 100 is going to be my trigger event. It's going to take the place of some sort of system event that I want to respond to. Event ID 200 is going to be my confirmation that the PowerShell script has indeed executed. So with that said, let me go ahead and close out of this. So what I want to do now is I want to set up a response to an event. So I'm just going to right click on this demo event that was just logged. And then I'm going to go to attach task to this event. And this is going to bring up the create basic task wizard that you saw a moment ago. So the first thing that we have to do is to provide a name and a description. 
Since I'm only doing a demo, I'm not going to worry about providing a meaningful name, but in the real world, you would, of course, want to do that. I'll go ahead and click Next. And so the next thing that we have to do is to specify the event that we want to respond to. So here you can see the log is the application log, the source is demo, and the event ID is 100. And the reason why all of this is grayed out is because rather than creating a task from scratch, I'm creating a task based on a specific event. So all of the event details are pre-populated for me and I can't change that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now I'm taken to the action screen. This is where I define what's going to happen whenever this event occurs. And you can see that I have a few options. I can start a program, I can send an email message, and I can display a message. Now, sending an email message and displaying a message, both of those functions are deprecated, but we can certainly launch a program. So I'm going to stick with the start a program option and click next. And so now I have to specify the program or script that I want to run. Now, rather than simply entering the name of my PowerShell script, what I need to do instead is enter powershell.exe. Then the next thing that I have to do is to provide some arguments. So I'll go down to the arguments field. And the first argument that I'm going to provide is execution policy bypass. This makes it so that if the machine has a restrictive execution policy, our PowerShell script is going to run anyway. The next argument that I need to add is file. So I'll type dash file. And then I need to list the file that I want to run. In my case, it's going to be, and this has to be in quotes, c colon slash scripts slash demo dot ps1 and then close quotation marks. And I'll go ahead and click next. And then I'll click finish. And we can see that Event Viewer has created the scheduled task. So I'll click OK to clear the message. And so now let's go ahead and trigger our demo event once again. So I'll go back to PowerShell. And I'm going to repeat the command that creates the demo event. I'll press Enter. And when I do, you can see that there was very briefly a PowerShell pop-up and that pop-up displayed a message. It cleared very quickly. So we didn't really have time to read the message, but the script ran nonetheless. So let me go ahead and minimize this and let's take a look at the event log. Once again, I'm going to refresh the display. And so here we have event 100. This is the event that just ran. This was our trigger event. And you can see the text, this is a text event. And then just above that, we have event ID 200. And that's the event that indicated that the PowerShell script has executed. So the trigger event was logged and that kicked off our PowerShell script. And the PowerShell script was what created this particular event right here. So that's how you configure a PowerShell script to run in response to an event that has been logged within the Windows Event Viewer.